Why are emotions important? You may think that recognize your emotions comes naturally, or that it's not as important as powering through and focusing on the positive. Believe it or not, there are real-time benefits to stopping to recognize and address your feelings as they come up. And by the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp on the why and the how of identifying your feelings. Stay to the end and I'll give you my number one tip for starting your journey of emotional recognition, plus my bonus tip if you're already good at recognizing your emotions and are ready to dive a little deeper. The Trauma Edco channel is all about helping you better understand your emotions because that is one of the first steps to processing and moving through trauma. This video is just one of many that is designed to fill your tool belt with all you need to live happily ever after alongside your emotions. At our worst, we are typically experiencing what we call negative feelings or negative emotions. This is anything that has to do with negativity, unhappiness, self-doubt, impatience, irritability, defensiveness, and even pessimism. Our sense of value feels at risk and our vision starts to narrow and our energy gets consumed in this mode of self-protection. So what does this actually look like? It might look like if I am having a bad day, something happened at work and a project didn't go the way I liked it to, I go home, I'm already in this agitated state, and then maybe I walk in the house and I see that the kids made a mess in the kitchen and didn't clean it up. If I am at my worst, I'm most likely to lash out at them, to blame them for the kitchen not being clean, and I'll do it in a way that like puts them down or minimizes them or makes them feel bad. Because again, I'm not at my best in that moment. And that's not the kind of mom that I would wanna be. Or if I'm at work and I've got these negative emotions coming up, something's triggering me and I'm feeling off, I might take it out on a coworker. Um, if somebody makes a mistake, I might be more likely to get snappy with them or blame them or cause them to feel like they're not good enough because something that they did made me upset and I lash out at them. So at our best, we feel positive emotions. We feel happy, confident, calm, focused, enthusiastic, optimistic. That's when we are our most productive selves and get along best with others. And we know it because we feel good inside of our bodies. We're more likely to encourage others and lift them up. We're more likely to not feel as bogged down. If I walk into the kitchen and I see that it's a mess, I'm more likely to say, hey kids, clean it up, right? And kind of let them off the hook, let myself off a hook while still getting my needs met. So when we can recognize our emotions, we, number one, are able to gain control. This means we know what we need and we know what we want in any moment. And when we are recognizing that we are having this emotion come up, we can more easily respond instead of react. So again, with the idea of coming in and seeing the kitchen's a mess, instead of hurting people accidentally by my aggression, my mean words, my energy that is coming at them, I'm more likely to be able to recognize within myself, you know what? I had a bad day. I need to take some time for myself before I am interacting with other people. So I get to take control of myself. I get to take control of my emotions, my feelings. And once I've managed those, then I can go out and say the things that I need to say in a way that's not hurtful. Number two, we get to stop negative thoughts before they run amuck in our mind. So many times we have these automatic negative thoughts that are just going on in our minds and before we know it, we're feeling agitated about something and we don't even know why. We don't even know where it came from. But when you have an awareness of your emotions, then as those negative thoughts start to come up, we can stop them right in their tracks and we can divert to something else. So again, we now have control to say, nope, I'm gonna stop these negative thoughts I'm gonna turn on some uplifting music. I'm going to listen to a podcast that's all about positivity. So I'm gonna stop these thoughts and gain that control. Number three, we can get our needs met by asking for what we're needing or wanting or taking a break to turn back into ourselves. So again, if I'm aware that I'm being triggered and I'm feeling upset and maybe I don't know where it's coming from, I can get my needs met by saying, 
hey kids, I need to take a break. I need to go have some quiet time. Or if I'm at work, I can say to my coworkers, you know what guys, I'm feeling a little bit off. Give me five minutes to kind of recalibrate and I'll come back. So when we know what's happening inside of us, we can ask for what we want and the people around us will be more than happy to allow us that time to take a break because they know when we come back, we're going to be our best selves. Again, we get to gain that control over ourselves by asking for what we want. Number four is it allows us to take responsibility instead of taking something out on someone else. So again, it's all about this responsibility piece. If I know what I'm feeling, then I can make sure that I'm not putting something out on somebody else that doesn't deserve it. I'm not going to take it out on them to make them feel bad so now we're all just feeling bad. I can look at myself, I can take responsibility of, you know what, this is, this is my issue. This is my challenge. Yeah, the sink is messier. Yeah, this deadline didn't get met but the feelings of it, the emotions of it are my responsibility. And if I can take responsibility for my own feelings and emotions, then I can make a request to have these, these work projects done. I can make a request to have the sink or the kitchen taken care of without taking it out on someone else. Because I don't know about you, but for me, if I take something out on someone else, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good for them. It doesn't feel good for me. I can't, tell you how many nights I went to bed before I found this emotional awareness where I yelled at my kiddos and then going to bed at night, I felt bad about myself and I felt lots of regret. So taking this responsibility will help us not have all those regrets and be able to go to bed saying, I did a good job today. And number five, we do it for the feel good emotions. And when we are aware of the feel good emotions, a lot of times we don't take a moment to step back and savor it. We think, oh, I'm feeling happy, like this is great, but we don't actually take a moment to really digest it and let it sink in and to celebrate it for what it is. So now you're wondering, how do I start this journey of recognizing my emotions? It's pretty simple. It's gonna take some conscious attention. And what it is, is in any given moment throughout your day, ask yourself, how am I feeling? If you don't know, just give them a name. Just like a child who's learning something new, it doesn't have to make sense. The purpose is that you start this journey and start creating the momentum. So if you could say, how am I feeling? You might go, oh, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling content. I'm feeling wiggly wobbly. And it doesn't matter if wiggly wobbly isn't the name of an emotion. Again, the idea is that you're training yourself to tune in, to tap into what you're feeling, and you'll know what it means. That wiggly wobbly feeling probably has a certain kind of feeling in your body where you're discombobulated in some way. The idea, again, is to start, get, start that practice of recognizing in any given moment how you're feeling so that if you need to take a break, you can take the break so that you can take care of yourself. My bonus tip is now that you are good at recognizing your own emotions, ask yourself if there is any emotional healing that you can do to let these emotions go more easily. So for me, when I'm feeling um, really frustrated and angry, I will actually start to break out. I'll get acne on my face and it's a pretty clear sign to me that I am not working on something that could have some deeper emotional healing. So it gives me this um, opportunity to dig in a little deeper and say, okay, I know that I've been feeling frustrated. I know that I've been feeling angry. Let me dive in a little bit deeper to figure out which past traumas are coming to the surface, literally, that are ready to be healed. And so all of this is just part of the journey of self-awareness. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I invite you to watch the next video, how to deal with someone who lacks self-awareness. Because I know that as you are on this journey of discovering your own emotions and taking on that responsibility, sometimes we come across other people in our lives who are lacking that same kind of self-awareness. And it's really helpful to know how to cope with that and how to work through it. I am Shannon Ray. This has been your Ray of Sunshine and I will see you in the next video.